A style guide is a set of rules that outline how your writing should be formatted. It tells you how to format the list of resources you used in your paper and how to cite those sources in your writing. The style guide you're probably most familiar with is MLA, which is created by a group called the Modern Language Association. When I asked several students why we cite sources in research writing, most told me so teachers could check up on their research. Well, I suppose that is something a teacher could do with your citations. I don't know too many who do that unless there is an obvious issue with something that a student has written. There are three primary reasons the experts who govern the citation formats made up those rules you know as MLA or APA. The first is, of course, to give credit where credit is due. Plagiarism is passing other people's ideas off as your own, and citations make it really obvious where you are getting your information from. The second reason for citations is for your benefit. Using citations supports what you are saying in your paper, and when you use experts to back up your thoughts and ideas, your credibility is enhanced. When others scan your work cited page, they should get a quick glimpse into the quality of your research efforts. A nice list of research quality academic sources makes you look like you searched for the best quality information. This makes you look informed and knowledgeable about the topic. A work cited with sources like these makes the writer look lazy and uninformed. The final reason for citations is often the most overlooked. Citations help others who are researching similar topics. Citations are essentially breadcrumbs that others can follow if they are on a similar research quest. For example, if you were researching online social relationships, you might run across this article in the database. In this article, there is a reference to a report by Kraut and some other researchers. ETAL is Latin for and others. In this sentence, I learned that Kraut specifically looked at introverts versus extroverts in his study, and that's what I would like some more information about. But the author of this particular article doesn't go into the kind of detail I was hoping for. But using this citation, I can zip to the references page and find everything I need to to locate the actual report. That's a primary reason why all those academic experts continue to use citations long after they have established themselves as bigwigs in their fields of study. Sharing their research certainly enhances their argument, but it also helps others who are doing similar research track down some other great sources. Just about everyone in academia can agree that citations are important, but what they can't agree on is how they should be formatted and what they should include which is why there are different citation styles. The two main citation formats you'll use in college are MLA and APA. When it comes to bibliographic information, both styles require the same basic information, just in a different order. MLA format is used most often in English courses. Truthfully, I did not even know that APA was a style until I went to college. And all of my professors outside my English classes required that citation format. So I ended up using it a great deal. Internal citations are a more obvious area of difference. Remember, your internal citation is essentially like a tag that you insert in the writing of the paper. So it's easy for your reader to see which source your information came from. This fact about oncoproteins being a target for a cancer-fighting virus came from a source written by the author Weinberg. Without that internal citation, I would have no idea which of the works in the Works Cited page actually included that piece of information. Similarly, this definition of an oncogene came from this website. This student is using internal citations really well to give credit to the sources she used to find the information, which also makes it easy for me, the reader, to know which source to reference if I want to use it in my own research. You need to always use internal citations. An MLA internal citation includes the author's last name and the page number where that information came from. In contrast, an APA citation includes the author's last name and the date. Why the difference? Well, in English classes, knowing where something is located in a cited work is much more important than when that work was written. 
seeing that the event this person is writing about happened on page 314 is a lot more useful to me if I want to track down that scene or that quote as compared to just having the date the novel was published. In contrast, APA style is used in social, medical, and physical sciences where shorter articles are usually referred to as opposed to long novels. For these fields, the date of research is more important, so I can see how current the information is that is being referred to. Your different teachers and professors are not just trying to torture you by requiring different styles. They simply choose the style that makes the most sense and is the most useful for their subject. Each professor or teacher will tell you which style they want, and from there, it's just a matter of following it. I don't know if they had to take a sacred vow to uphold citation formats or not, but my college professors were super serious and super strict when it came to citations and the required style guide. You are fortunate to have access to a lot of online tools that you can reference that will handle the punctuation of these formats for you, but don't put too much confidence in tools like EasyBib or NightSight. These citation generators are crowdsourced, so each citation is only as good as the person who first created it. EasyBib does not have a team of citation makers who sit around all day and create work cited entries for you. They have a team of programmers and website developers that created a tool that properly punctuates the information that is plugged into its data fields. But unfortunately, a lot of what is currently in there is just plain wrong. Look at this citation that I found on EasyBib for The Great Gatsby. The person who created it seemed to think that Allen County Public Library is a publisher. Libraries are where you can go to check out books. There's not an actual printing press in the back that whips them up on the spot. And you would look pretty foolish if you didn't bother to fix that before you had EasyBib create the citation for you. EasyBib will do a good job for you if you double check that all of these fields have the correct information in them before you click Create. EasyBib's specialty is putting punctuation in the right spot. It's not great at pulling information into those fields correctly. You'll want to be especially careful with this for websites since the way the webmaster coded the website affects whether or not EasyBib can pull the information that goes in the right spot. I'll use this website as an example. I'll copy the URL and plug it into EasyBib. Here's what EasyBib was able to pull from the website, but I see a couple of errors right off the bat. I'm going to continue to the next step so that I can fix those. I will put my windows side by side so this process is easier. The title came in correctly but isn't capitalized, which is common for MLA 8, so I'll fix that. Next is the author field, which is missing, so I will look at the actual web page again to see if I can find one. When I scroll to the top and the bottom of the article, I don't see anything, so I'll leave it blank. And just so you know, the only things that are okay to leave blank with websites are the author field and the date of publication field. When I move on to the website title, it's mostly correct, but there are some extra words here at the end that are not reflected on the actual website, so I need to delete those. The publisher is often the same as the website title, and the best place to find it is in the footer of the web page. Here it is right next to the copyright symbol. Now this copyright date is for the entire web page. It's not the same as the date this particular article was posted on the website. So next, I need to check for a date. I can see that EasyBib grabbed this date. I don't know why, I know it's not correct. When I look at the article, the actual publication date is right here. So there's another thing I will need to fix. Once I've checked and corrected the EasyBib fields, I can click Create Citation, and EasyBib will correctly format the information for me, which is nice. If you decide to use EasyBib for your citations, make sure to carefully check all information. Consider EasyBib as partially helpful. If you don't want to use EasyBib, you can just use an online style reference like these. Just carefully follow the examples provided and plug in your own information. Citations are simply a matter of attention to detail. You should get them perfect every time, but you won't unless you double check them for accurate information and accurate punctuation. 
And if you have trouble with finding the right information to even plug into your citations, consult some online resources, which are filled with lots of examples, or ask a librarian until you become confident in your ability to include the right information with the correct formatting in your citations.